computer with an outsized memory, a special hearing system for the deaf, and three TVs with crystal clear color. Now, ladies and gentlemen, meet your host, Ted Uncle Santa Rogers. Super. Good evening. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well, happy Christmas. Happy what a marvelous lot. Great. Glad you're in a good mood. It's really lovely to have you here on the show. We've got some terrific guests, great surprises for you for our Christmas special. And I'm sure at home you're all getting into the party mood. I hope you are. I bet you're getting inebriated in Inverness, <laughs> sloshed in Soliho, <laughs> Blotto in Bolton, legless in Little Hampton, or like me, plastered in Paris. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Can you believe it? Hey? I can't, can't believe it. I broke my wrist. Yeah, I was ironing the curtains and fell off the ladder. <laughs> Terrible thing about it, you know. If you've had it at home, you'll know what I mean. It's so heavy. And when you're out in the street walking, I've got to lift it up and put it on my arm like that. And then I've got a bit of dirt in my eye. And I... <laughs> I felt like a vicar on his day off. <laughs> <laughs> But we have, we got a terrific show, as I say, for you tonight. And something also very, very good for us, we got certain contestants tonight playing our game. Now, these are people who come into your homes every week. You know them more than anybody, and they are special, invited, celebrity married couples. Ah! Oh! Oh! I'm the club. I'm the club. Yeah, thank you. Come sit down. There you are. I'm so sorry we're late for the quiz and that, but I tell you, I had murders getting here today, 200 miles on the motorway, and I had to stand all the way. Why was that? Why? Well, someone pinched the saddle off me bike. <laughs> Agony. Now, Agony. But Bernie, it's lovely to see you and Schnorr, but you know, you're a bit sort of premature. We, we've only got sort of married celebrity couples. Yes, well, I'm the next best thing, you see. What do you mean? I'm an unmarried father. <laughs> yeah, that's true. If this was whose baby, you'd never guess he was the father of this baby, would you? <laughs> Lovely snorbits. Have you had a good day, Burn? We've had a lovely day. Have we had a lovely... Have you still hello to Uncle no, Ted? No, slobbering no. away, you look. Yeah, get Lovely. it from Ziggy, you know. <laughs> <laughs> the thing is, I must <laughs> tell you... I'll tell you what we did. I took a shopping and I tied her up outside a supermarket in the centre of Leeds and she saw a, she saw a cat. And what happened? Well, the supermarket's now in the centre of Barnsley. Bernie <laughs> <laughs> Winters and Snorbits, right, folks. Right, have a stop. See you later. Cheers, Bernie. Yeah, Lovely. <laughs> we'll be seeing Bernie and Snobs just a little later on. Now, you know, there's one little character, even though we're playing for charity tonight, that our contestants have to avoid. That's our little booby prize, Dusty Bin, who's standing over here with lovely Linda Lee Lewis. <laughs> ah. Yes. There he is. Yes, the dreaded Dusty Bin. And it doesn't change, even though it's Christmas. Remember, he is the booby prize. If he's won at the end of the show, even though it's for charity, all our contestants go home with is a brand new bin. That's all they get. That's right. Dusty, out the way. We'll see you a bit later on in the show. Off you go. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, baby. <laughs> How are you, Linda? All right, Madonna? Yeah? Nice, nice Christmas outfit. Now, listen, as I said, we have got special celebrity married couples, haven't yes, we? Yes, we do. So who are our first couple tonight? Right, we have Dolly and Matt Skilbeck from Emmerdale Farm. Oh. <laughs> Yes. yes. There's Gene Rogers and Freddie Pine, of course, Matt and Dolly. Matt, now, how are things down at the farm? Well, we're up to our eyes, as usual. <laughs> uh, they, they reckon that farmers are a bit simple. Is that true, do you think? You've got to be kidding. You've got to have three A-levels around our way before you can be a village idiot. <laughs> Now then, listen, Jean, Dolly, I mean, you know, you're in Emmerdale, a great British soap. What's, what's your favourite American soap? Oh, I suppose the glossiest one is Dynasty, but uh, I think I like Dallas. Oh, Dallas, mm. eh? Yeah. From Pitchfork to Southfork. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, folks, lovely to have you here with us. And um, what charity are you playing for tonight? Uh, Leukaemia Research. Fantastic. That's good. Very good indeed. <laughs> now, Linda, who are celebrity couple number two tonight? We have Bobby and Sheila Grant from Brookside. Ah. <laughs> Ricky 
Tomlinson and Sue Johnson, of course, Bobby and Sheila, yeah. Now, listen, I know that, uh, Bobby, I've got to keep calling you in your character, Bobby, you're a bit of a union guy, isn't That's you? right, yeah. yeah. And, and how's it going? I mean, does it really work being that strong union? Yeah, they enjoy it, yes, yeah, yeah, sure. sure. Sheila, is, I mean, when he comes out on the strike, is it official or when you get at home, is it, is it nice and easy? Is it official or unofficial or do you, you know? Well, well, I'll give you an example, Ted. Last summer, one of our lady neighbours was sunbathing topless. I won't tell you which one. <laughs> and I said, uh, I see they're all out next door. And he said, oh, are they official or unofficial? <laughs> <laughs> and so what charity are you playing for tonight? Uh, Radio Royal, which is the teaching hospital in Liverpool. It's to get new equipment for, the, for everybody, for the Slightly. patients, the visitors. Well, the lot, let's know. hope you have a lot of luck tonight. Good, good, good. good. <laughs> for our celebrity couple, number three. We have Jack and Vera Duckworth from Coronation Street. Oh. <laughs> ah, yes. <laughs> Linda? Mm -hmm. Bye, darling. See you in a bit. Okay. Bye, Linda. <laughs> Bye, Linda. <laughs> well, she's flirting with Linda straight away there. Ooh. Did you see that? Yeah. Now, come on, Vera, tell us. <laughs> <laughs> when you first met, I mean, was it love at first sight? Well, he came up to me at this dance and he said, uh, are you on your own, Chuck? I said, yeah. He said, I'm not surprised. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Jack. Now, seriously, is that true? I don't know. I was drunk at the time. <laughs> you are? You are? Smashing that you're here. And who are you playing for tonight? Uh, well, I'm playing for, um, it's a deaf home, uh, or oh, a deaf home. Uh, it's a home for the deaf and disabled. Lovely. Good, good. Um, is, he, is he playing for you as well? I'm, I'm playing for the handicapped kids through the cab drivers of Manchester. Good, good. Lovely. Well done, eh? Nice. <laughs> OK, folks. You know, on 3 to 1, we start with a quiz. This week being a special show, we're only going to have one round of questioning, and you'll be glad to hear that. And it's only 20 questions, but you are going to play for £100 for each correct answer. Yeah, OK, that's not so bad. Let's hope you do well. Good luck to you. Here's the first question. It's, uh, what group name was taken by the singers and musicians of the record Do They Know It's Christmas? Ah, that's the Bobby and Sheila. Band-Aid. Band-Aid is absolutely right. Well done, yes. Good. Here's one for the ladies here. What is the everyday name for the white flower called Black Hellebore? Uh, hello, Freddie's gone for that one. Yes, Matt, what is it? Christmas Rose. He's absolutely right. Good, there you are. He knows it. <laughs> Next question. What kind of food is a Yule log? Oh, that's a Bobby and Sheila again. Cake. It Something is, it's a cake. Christmas yeah, Rose. wonderful. Good luck. <laughs> All right. Which pantomime character marries Alice Fitzwarren? That's, that's Jean. Dick Whittington. Dick Whittington is right, yeah. yes. Here you are. <laughs> now then. What three-letter adjective was F used for for the Beatles, the four Beatles? That's Bobby and Sheila again. Fabulous. Don't make up your own gags out there. <laughs> Indeed, Fab was absolutely right. Good to you. That's right. Next question is which American singer insists on doing it his way? Oh, look at that. Jack was in like a flash. Who is it? Frank Sinatra. Frank Sinatra, of course. <laughs> yes! <laughs> <laughs> old blue eyes, unlike Oliver Reed. He's old red eyes. <laughs> Last time he gave a pint of blood, it had a head on it. <laughs> on press-button telephones, what number appears above the number eight? There you go. On press-button telephones. OK, Bobby and Sheila have gone for that. Five. Five is absolutely right. Well done, Bobby. Yep. <laughs> Next question is, what is the occupation of a chippy? Oh! <laughs> That's Matt and Dolly. OK. Carpenter. That's right, the carpenter right. is absolutely right. Oh, lovely. In Weatherfield, you right. According to the musical song, who do all the nice girls love? Bobby and Sheila. Sailor. The sailor is right, yes. What... <laughs> what kind of place is the Khyber? That pass. Yes, indeed. <laughs> oh, I thought you meant pass, pass. <laughs> no! Oh, shut up! <laughs> he got one, let him have it, yes. I, I didn't say his up. name, but he can have it. It's the pass. I was wondering where he was putting his hand here. I'm starting from here, me. <laughs> well, as long as it wasn't the Khyber pass, we're all right. Now... Here's the next question. In what game is the term up and under used? That's Bobby and Sheila. 
Rugby. Rugby. Rugby leading, in fact. Know that's it. It's all awesome. Yes. Yes. <laughs> now, next question is, in the army, what do the initials A-W-O-L stand for? <laughs> that's Bobby and Sheila again. Absent without leave. Uh, <laughs> absent without leave is right, of course, unless you're in the Coldstream Guards, then it's absent without lumps. Here's the next question. If a young, upwardly mobile person is called a yuppie, what term is used for the couple with double income, no kids yet? Pillage. <laughs> 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 I'd have given him the money for that. <laughs> All right, Bobby's going for it. Dinky. Dinky is right there. <laughs> Bobby. <laughs> <laughs> OK, so now then, here's the next question. If you die intestate, what have you not done? That's Bobby and Sheila again. Left a will. That's right, you have not left a will. <laughs> Who had the number one hit single at Christmas in 1957 with the song Mary's Boy Child? Oh, there you go, it's Vera and Jack. God! Ooh, quick! Three seconds is nearly up. Gone. It's gone. OK. Oh, no. no, he's gone. Bobby's gone for it. Harry Belafonte. Belafonte. Absolutely, he looked at you then. Right, oh. Harry Belafonte. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> On which day, <laughs> on which day of Christmas did my true love give to me a partridge in a pear tree? That's Bobby and Sheila. First. The first day of Christmas. Well That's right. I'm sure it didn't work. I'm <laughs> sure it didn't work. The next question: Whereabouts in London can you see the Christmas tree? Go, oh, you've gone for it again, Vera and Jack. Trafalgar Square. Trafalgar Square is right. Um, <laughs> Here's the next question. Which Spanish football club does Gary Lineker play for? Oh, that's Vera and Jack. Madrid. Wrong! <laughs> <laughs> sit down! <laughs> Get back! Sit down! <laughs> sit down! <laughs> it's old! <him. laughs> it's old! <laughs> what that about? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Barcelona is right, yes. <laughs> there you are. Oh. See, the ladies know it. Here's the next question. Which comic twangs his red braces at fellow performer Tommy Cannon? And that's Bobby and Sheila again. Bobby Ball. Bobby Ball is right, yes. <laughs> now then, what number in bingo is preceded by the word legs? That's Matt and Dolly. Eleven. Eleven is right, yes. <laughs> and, and that is our 20th question. And what have we got at the end of the quiz? Well, now, we've got Vera and Jack Duckworth. They've got £300. We've got Matt and Dolly. They've got £400. But Sheila and Bobby, are, they've won the quiz. £1,300 they've got. <laughs> oh. Oh. So, well, after all that activity, we've got to say goodbye to you at the end of the quiz. Oh. Oh, the ceramic, yes. That'll go well, but there's the cheque for £300 for the thank charity. You, thank you. Oh, OK. Yeah. But there's also a prize on offer. Who knows? It might come up for your charity tonight. That we'll see in a little while. You're going to go through to part two where all the big stuff is. Yeah. Lovely to have you live. Take care. Mm. Money go. Right. All the very best you've right. Thanks a lot. We'll see you in a couple of minutes on three, two, one. Here you go. Money you go. Is part two of our Christmas 321 with Matt and Dolly Skilbeck from Emmerdale Farm playing against Bobby and Sheila Grant from Brookside. Now, you know what's about to happen. We're going to show you three items at the end of each one of them. One of, we're going to have a special mystery guest coming in here to the table, leaving a clue object, reading a rhyme. When there are three here on the table, you've got to choose one to reject if you're the lucky couple who goes through the elimination question. And each of our three couples tonight have specifically asked for a certain kind of prize for their charity. That's what they're looking for as well as trying to get rid of Dusty Bin. So we're going to go on and have item number one. Christmas, of course, is a time for pantomime and there's nothing like a dame, they say. Well, we've had a lot of dames, haven't we? We've had the Beverly sisters, the Nolan sisters. Will you please greet the Grateful Sisters? <laughs> You walked in the joint <laughs> to tell you were a man of distinction, a real big spender. Good looking, so refined. <laughs> Wouldn't you like to know what's going on in my mind? So let, let me get, get right to the point. 
I'd have popped my cork for every man I've seen. A big spender. Spend a little time with me. Yeah. Hey, oh. hello, everybody. <laughs> my name is Madonna. <laughs> Don't you be Maradona, dear? <laughs> you shut your mouth, you. Let me tell you all about myself. Well, I'm 38, 26, 39. Oh, dear, you sound like a menu from a Chinese takeaway. <laughs> <laughs> yes, and by the look of her hair, dear, she's wearing the bird's nest suit. Oh. <laughs> Hello, everybody. My name is Henrietta. And I'm the one that splashes it all over. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, she does pong a bit. <laughs> I'll tell you something, if Muhammad Ali can only see you now. <laughs> As you can see, I'm the pretty one. I got my dress off Danny LaRue. Yeah, mm. must have been a bit of a struggle. struggle <laughs> Girls, what do you think of my earrings? Well, it's the first time I've seen cauliflowers with handles on them, love. <laughs> now then, girls, don't let's be nasty. No. no. I want to ask you something personal. Well, go on. Well, oh, what do you think of my... my Teeth. I've I've had them done with new caps. Caps? Show me. Let me have a look. You should have had bowler hats. I need to cover those. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Did I tell you I'm thinking of entering the Miss World contest? What is Miss Down Under? Why Down Under? Because that's where everything is. <laughs> I'll have you know. I'll have you know. But from behind, I've often been mistaken for Miss Annika Rice. Where? Where? Show me. Mm. Old, old bobbing bum. Look. <laughs> yes. <laughs> oh, oh, you're any jealous of me. I think I should be on page three. And so you should, of the exchange of Mart. <laughs> <laughs> enough, enough of this frivolity, girls. I'll tell you what, we'll let the magic mirrors decide who's the prettiest. Smart thinking. Yes. Right. Mirror, mirror in my hand. Who is fairest in this land? Mirror, mirror in my palm. Ooh. Who is the one with grace? and charm. Mirror, mirror in my mitt, who really is the fancy bit? Whippets! <laughs> Everybody wants to be a critic. I know. Still, it shan't change a thing. <laughs> so let me get right to the point. I'd have popped my cork for every man I seen. Hey, big Whee! spender! Hey, big spender! Ah, Father Christmas is here, and what are you leaving them, Father Christmas, as a clue? What is this? Oh, a, a, a lady's stocking. A, oh, a lady's stocking a lady's is stocking. the clue. And can we have their rhyme, please? Well, uh, not too good at reading, Ted, but I'll do my best. <laughs> With these you'll bring smiles to many faces, both played and held in loving embraces. <laughs> Quite good, Ted, yes, I am. <laughs> Did you understand that? Um, Don't worry about it. We'll... <laughs> You'll hear that a bit later on, but this is a little something for our audience on our special show tonight. We have Mystery Santa Claus bringing in these clue objects, and uh, if you know the identity of this particular character here, and I'm going to give you a clue to this, I'll put up your hand and ask, ask somebody's putting up their hand. I'm not e I've not even asked yet. Okay, I'm going to give you a clue. It's he horses about at a holiday camp. That lady. Who? Oh. Felix. Yeah, Felix, what, the cat? Yes. Well, let's have a look, is it? Bonnie. He can't get himself. It's no good. Yes. <laughs> You get yourself a lovely fashion watch, OK? Thank Thanks, you. Felix. Thank you, thank you Make sure that lady gets it up there. Well done, I darling. Give it right away. Happy <laughs> Christmas, Felix. <laughs> All All the hand. Cheers, mate. <laughs> <Thank you. laughs> oh, dear. Well, you'll have a chance to hear that a bit later on. Sit back. We're going to have item number two. Now, Christmas, of course, is a time for food and drink. Now, this is great, but not if you're the one that's going to be eaten. Feathers, dust on legs. <laughs> Who are you? I'm a gobbler. Who oh, what? I'm a gobbler. Don't you play golf for Liverpool? That's gobbler. <laughs> what are you? I'm a Rhode Island ever ready. <laughs> if 
never ready. Yeah, I'm a battery bird. <laughs> Are you a hen or a rooster? I've never looked. Why not? My neck's not long enough. <laughs> well, here, why don't you... Oh, oh. Why do you keep on eating? Because I'm being fattened up for Christmas. Yeah. They've got me on that stuff that makes budgies bounce. <laughs> Does it work? Oh, I'll say. Yesterday, I laid the same egg 24 times. <laughs> <laughs> I, I can't lay eggs. Why not? I have a itch in me hatchbox. <laughs> <laughs> what do you lay? Omelette. <laughs> you need fattening up, you do. You're a real skinny bird. You look like Marty Kane with a nose job. <laughs> My master says I'm beautiful. Beautiful. <laughs> oh, you want a Bernard's boilers, are you? <laughs> I haven't been very well at I had yellow jaundice. Really? Yeah, that's how I got in, accidentally got into the Guinness Book of Records. <laughs> oh, it was! The world's largest canary. <laughs> <laughs> Until they found me out. Why, what happened? Well, I, I gobbled when I ought to have tweeted. <laughs> you should have seen them run for cover. Why? I was flying round the room at the time. <laughs> hey, you wait till Christmas Day. Why? It won't be you doing the gobbling, it'll be them. Why, what happens? Well, first of all, they take out all your feathers, they pluck them out right down to the felt. Oh, it's a good job I'm wearing me clean on the best. <laughs> Next, they take both feet and pin them behind your ears. Ah, now that won't worry me because I'm double jointed. <laughs> but next comes the worst part. Yes. They take a hold of a handful of chestnuts and they'll force feed you. <laughs> How? Oh! Oh, ankle pair, don't predict. <laughs> Do I get a, a look like anaesthetic? You don't even get an aspirin. <laughs> Well, if it's as bad as that, why don't you escape? Cos I can't fly! I can't fly! I can't! You remind me of that bird that everybody hates. What? Not Nina Miskow. <laughs> no, Orville the Duck. Yeah, one thing about him has always puzzled me. What's that? I wonder when he turned green. Oh, you'll soon find out. When? When they take a hold of the handful of chestnuts. <laughs> And yet, another Father Christmas. And what's yes, the clue, true. Father Christmas? Well, I've got a glass tumbler here. A glass tumbler is their clue, and um, they have a rhyme. Please listen to this, folks. Right. Your chance to have the turnaround of Christmas sights and Christmas sounds. Now, that's the clue. Keep thinking about that, because our studio audience, once again, I'm going to ask you this. I've got a clue. Now, the lovely way she said sounds, there could be a bit of a clue to you here. Here's your clue. Anybody that knows it, wait until I ask who it is. The clue is, this lady is always in the swim of things. Sharon there, yeah, hang on, this gentleman Davis. here. Who? Sharon Davis. Sharon Davis, is it true? Uh, Got him one hit. Well done, sir. There we go. <laughs> yes. Super. Sharon. Lovely to see you. Thanks for coming. Happy Christmas. Christmas. That's for that gentleman there. Oh, Sharon Davis, ladies and gentlemen. Thank Thanks, Sharon. Thank oh, my love. Well done. Good. <laughs> now, well, the audience are doing okay, but yeah. what about you, Clues? Any idea? Not yet, no. No, not no. yet, no. Well, okay. Christmas is the time of year when there's a particular person that we, we tend to take for granted, but we always neglect. And without her, well, Christmas just wouldn't be the same. <laughs> Hello, my name's Tinker Bell, but they call me Tinker for short, cos I've lost me dinger. <sighs> They've stuck me up here every Christmas, since they bought me just after the war. And I don't mean the first, nor the second. I mean after we'd bashed up the boa. <laughs> oh, oh, hello, they're decorating the tree. Oh, this is the moment I dread. It's the dad, you see, with the aerosol snow. I mean, he's not a bit fussy where he squirts. <laughs> oh! Oh, bullseye! Oh, what a funny sensation. It's a bit like having a jacuzzi <laughs> in Iceland. <laughs> Still, there's one compensation. He always uses that lazy shave, so it saves me having my legs waxed. <laughs> oh, hello. Oh, he's managed to get the fairy lights working. Oh. Although going by other years, oh, they won't last long. <laughs> oh, oh, oh. 
See what I mean? <sighs> I'm now at that sad in-between age where my choice of men is just nil. Because I'm too old, I'm afraid, for Bill Wyman. And too young for Bungalow Bill. <laughs> Even to tempt Ronnie Reagan, I'd have to lie about me age. I've lost all me old magic powers. A quick flash was once an event. Now I can't even work up a twinkle, cos me wand is all withered and bent. <laughs> <Ooh>. <laughs> Through the years, they've often repaired me and stuck lots of new pieces in place. I've had more bobs and tucks in my body than Michael Jackson has had on his face. <laughs> Each twelfth night, they put me in a shoebox to spend long winter months in the dark. Squeeze next to an oversexed, <laughs> but I'm too old for that sort of lark. More's the pity. <laughs> but in fairyland, when I was younger, I was flighty and so fancy free that to help all the gnomes and the goblins, they stuck a national elf warning on me. Good night. <laughs> Ah, now then. Another, another Santa Claus. Now, what's the clue? It's a, it's a hat, is the clue, Santa. And can we have the rhyme? Listen to this one. This is the third one. Can be part of the Christmas merry-go-round, where everyone's value is judged by the pound. Now, did you hear that? Well, don't worry too much. I'll read that for you in a minute, because here's another one for... Oh, wait, they're knocking themselves in the... They can't wait to answer me on this one. OK, just a minute. Hands are going up, but I've got to give you the clue first. And it's the first one with a hand up. Everybody's hands down, please. OK, this man was a national hero. That gentleman, that gentleman there, no talking. That gentleman. Bob Champion. I don't know, is it? Let's have a quick look. It's Bob Champion. Well done. Yes. Hey, Bob, lovely to see you. Thanks for coming on. Happy Christmas. Where's the watch for that gentleman up there? Thank you very much. Thanks a lot. Bob Champion, ladies and gentlemen. Happy Christmas, Bob. Thank you. Thank you very much. A great Bob Champion, that, that's super. <laughs> However, listen, folks, we've got three here on the table. As it's Christmas, I'll read the three for you so that you can refresh your memory. Now, item number one came in from Felix. He brought in the ladies' stocking and said, With these you'll bring smiles to many faces, both played and held in loving embraces. That's the first one. OK, item number two was the tumbler. The glass tumbler came in from Sharon Davis, who said, Your chance to have a turnaround of Christmas sights and Christmas sounds. Right. And the third one, the hat was just brought in from Bob Champion, who said, can be part of the Christmas merry-go-round where everyone's value is judged by the pound. Now then, you're trying to get rid of Dusty Bin, and you're also looking for the prize that you've, uh, you've asked for for your particular charity. Now, is it there on the table yet? We don't know. Is the bin here? We still don't know. You've got to choose one to get rid of if you get through. What are you going to do? Bobby and Sheila? They're whispering. Well, we can hear you, know. Yeah. We'd like to hear. What is it, Matt? What do you think? So I'm wondering about the, whether the about hat what? is the, the is bin. what? Something about, yes. I think the hat. Something about judging. I think a medical round, round. I don't know, it's just... Can you, you can't read that one again. <laughs> no, I can't read it again. <laughs> I shouldn't have read it that time, but I did. <laughs> get rid of the no, hat. I think the hat's the hat's right, right, we're going to get rid of the hat. All right. <laughs> Whoever gets through, you reject you the hat. Here's the elimination question right here, so please put your hands by that button there, not over. When you think you know the answer, hit the button, answer. If you're wrong, I can offer it to the other couple. They get a free go. If they get it, of course, they'll go through. Here's the question. Good luck to you. This man was born in Stepney in London. His singing has sold well over 10 million records. He began as a Butlin's red coat. He's hovering there. He supplied a lot of material for the Morecambe and Wise show. His biggest hit was I Pretend, and that's oh, no. Bobby and Sheila no. have gone for it. Who is no. it? No, no, I, said, I was going to say Des O'Connor. It's Well, it is Des O'Connor, yeah. <laughs> is it? Oh, it is. <laughs> yeah, it is. Yeah. 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 Oh. <laughs> well done, that's great. I was getting worried. Des would have been a bit peeved if you hadn't got that. <laughs> oh, yeah. So that, of course, means that we have to say goodbye to... Uh, to Freddie and Jean, Matt and Dolly. It's been great having you on the show, Thank but you. uh, you've done pretty well. Now, we've got money, of course, that they won in the quiz, haven't we? Yes, we have. I believe Sharon Davis has that. Ah, uh, yes, here's Sharon. Whoa! Sharon! Yeah. 
400 pounds. Four pounds. And of course, we've got Dusty Bin for you. Ceramic well. Dusty Bin. Uh, and the 400 pounds, of course, for your charity. It's been great having them on the show. Yeah. Freddie, thanks very much indeed for coming. Thank Take you, care. Ted. Jean, all the very best to you. Thank you. Very happy Christmas. Happy and for you, you, Sharon. Oh, it's lovely yeah. to see you. Ladies and gentlemen, give them a round of applause, will you? Thanks, Ross. Thank, Thank you very much. Lovely. Well, now. Oh. So, the folks from Brookside are through. Uh huh. And the most difficult part now, as I say, not only have you got to look for Dusty Bin, but also the prize that you want for your charity, and you've rejected the hat. Yeah. Mm -hmm. We're going to wait for a couple of minutes. We'll see you soon on 3, 2, 1. Come on, here you go. Good. <laughs> Christmas 3 2 1 and got through to the tough part of the show. We have Rick and Sue, of course, that's Bobby and Sheila Grant from Brookside. We know you've rejected the hat. No thoughts in the meantime what it could be. You only hope it's going to be something that you don't need. Okay, yeah. Bob Champion brought in the hat. Can be part of the Christmas merry go round where everyone's value is judged by the pound, is what he said. What do we have for you here? Can be part of the Christmas merry-go-round. Well, the, the word can could start you thinking of the bin. The clue object was a hat, suggesting passing the hat around, leading to where everyone's value is judged by the pound. Well, that refers to the tradesmen who expect a tip at Christmas, like the postman, the paper boy, and the man who takes this away, the dustman, Dusty Bin. You've done it! Woo -hoo! Woo -hoo! Lovely. There you are. See that? Yeah, he's not very happy about that at all. <laughs> Oh, they're so hard, he got it right out the gun. <laughs> well done, smash, and that means a good prize is going home tonight, whatever happens. Okay, we're gonna have our next item. Now, Christmas, of course, is a time for pantomime. We've got the best of the lot, Cinderella. Hello, boys and girls. Hello, <laughs> Listen, not only do I have my own dog, Snorbis, but you see, I also train other dogs. Now, this one here, this is little Bouncy, little Bouncy. And what I do is I throw this piece of wood and Bounce will go after it, won't you, my little baby? Are we ready? One, two, three, go! Go, <laughs> 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 It's a good job I might gum shield in. It's a good job for you. You were wearing your foul-proof cup. Boy, what do you mean? What Look you here mean? on the back of you. You've got this dog back there. <laughs> oop, oop. You naughty little oh. bow bouncy. Hello, everybody. I'm Baron Punch-Up. <laughs> what are you talking about? Your name's Baron Hard-Up. Here, when I walk the streets like that in this gear, it's Punch-Up. And with this stupid wig... Oh, look at that. Favor. You got potty or something? Dear, oh dear, I never knew you suffered with dandruff. I don't. I've just finished distempering the ceiling. <laughs> What was that blood-curdling cry mean? It means that my dog's cold nose has discovered another courting couple. <laughs> Talking about courting couples, you know, I think we must get someone to court Cinders. She needs a good man, you know. Yeah, the state of her, she needs a very brave man. <laughs> oh, 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 I say. Oh, I shall have to stop running when I'm wearing my gay deceivers. Why? Well, see. Me coconut shells keep banging together. I don't understand you sometimes. You know what I mean? The size of your chest, you'd have got by with walnuts. <laughs> and may I say, your hair looks fantastic. Thank you. Where have you been? The beauty parlour. <laughs> Why are you carrying these pair of tights for them? Oh. Well, they made the two of us put a leg each over our heads before we was allowed out the shop. The two of you? Me and Janet Street pulled. <laughs> Good news, Cinders. Oh. The Prince has invited you to a royal knees up. A knees up? Oh, no! I'll get dizzy just clapping me hands. What are you talking about? It's not an exercise, it's a royal ball, you silly. Well, how can I go to a royal occasion in these scruffy rags? Well, it's never worried Bob Geldof. <laughs> 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 dear, oh dear. See that? It's Joe Bugner. <laughs> nice to see you walking about again, Joe. I believe that you require my services. Well, who are you? 
I am your fairy godfather. Oh, I've heard lots of rumours about you. <laughs> By the looks of them, they're all true as well. <laughs> I'll hang one on him in a minute. <laughs> listen, which one of you is Cinderella? Well, the prettiest one, of course. Oh, well, in that case, listen, Cinderella. Oh, no. <laughs> you silly old fool. Here, it's me. I say, do you think you could make me look beautiful and desirable, eh? The impossible we do at once. But miracles take a little bit longer. <laughs> We haven't got six months, you know. <laughs> the ball's tomorrow. Ah, uh, well, in that case, go behind that hedge. Behind oh. the hedge? Yes. Behind. Oh, behind the hedge. Did you see, see that, that, sir? That's the first time she's been asked behind the bushes in years. <laughs> and now the magic spell. Take four Derek's mouth and Farrah Fawcett's choppers. Take Lulu's legs and Dolly Parton's whoppers. <laughs> So do I, so do I. <laughs> Don't think the wife would stand for it, though. <laughs> ah. And, yes, another Father Christmas with another clue, which is, uh, what is that, Father Christmas? It's a chip pan, yes? And could we have their rhyme, please? Now, please listen to this one. This container can be filled right up to the brink with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. Beautifully said. That was quite something. Now, I'm sure you heard that. A great accent there. I wonder whether it's going to throw off our audience, though, on that one, because I'm going to give you a clue out there to see if you know the identity of this mystery Santa Claus. Get ready with the hands going up there. There's a few scratching eyes there and heads and things like that. Get ready for this. The clue for you is you've heard of Monday night at 8. Well, this lady used to keep you up to date with what was going on at 9. La lady here with... Jan well, I wonder. Let's have a quick look, is it? Yes, it is. It's Jan Leamy. <laughs> Lovely. Hey, Jan. A watch for you. But what a super accent. <laughs> now, listen, that was more brummy than anything I've ever heard. You don't come from that way, do you, originally? No. <laughs> Beautifully done, though, wasn't it? Good. Well done to you. You get that. Ladies and gentlemen, a happy Christmas and thank you. You're mm. welcome. Jan Leamy. Thank you, Jan. Thank you. That's for that lady over there. Yes. <laughs> Jan Leamy. Lovely. Now. You've forgotten all about that completely. I'll tell you what I can do. I can refresh your memory on one of these two again. That was the first item, the, the stocking, the lady's stocking, or the tumbler. What do you want to hear? The stocking, please. OK, the stocking came in item number one. That was brought in by Felix Boness. Lady's stocking, with these you'll bring smiles to many faces, both played and held in loving embraces. So, you've got to reject one now. So which one will it be? Reject that one. Yeah, reject that one. Yeah, don't like that at all, do you? Huh? <laughs> don't, don't let me influence you. No, 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 no. Get rid of that. You want to get rid of that? Yeah. 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 Is that yeah. all right with you? Yeah. All right, then. You're going to reject, then. <laughs> Item number one, the lady's stocking. With these, you'll bring smiles to many faces, both played and held, in loving embraces, is what Felix said. With these, you'll bring smiles to many faces. The clue object suggests the Christmas stocking, bearing gifts and the smiling faces, possibly children, leading to both played and held in loving embraces. And that's just what this prize is. A whole lot of cuddly toys and games for children. Just take a look at this. <laughs> Yes, Santa's going to need a large team of reindeer to deliver this huge collection of assorted toys and games. It'll give the young generation hours of pleasure during their stay in hospital. Yes. <laughs> Superb prize. And uh, you turned it down, but of course your loss is somebody else's gain tonight because on behalf of everybody here at 321, we're sending all of those toys to the Birmingham Children's Hospital. Classic. <laughs> Have fun, kids. You know you will. Well done. OK, it's our last item. Back to Cinderella. It's now the morning after, and the prince is looking for his lost love. <laughs> oh, hello. Hello. Hey, I'm just helping Cinders do the housework, you see. <clears throat> Oh dear, oh dear, that must be the ladies with the makeup for the ugly sisters. I'd better go and get the forklift truck. <laughs> no, it is I, Prince Charming. Pleased to meet you. Good grief, 
Sire, you, you've come to my humble home. What an honor, and to shake your hand. I feel so humble. Please forgive me, I mean, oh, the excitement. So pleased to meet you, and a small ripple as well, would you believe? Yes. How wonderful. I'm so embarrassed, I, I've got nothing to offer you. I'm going to mushy peen you. No, well, not to worry. I happen to have about my person a handful of magic beans. Magic beans? Oh, you see? Oh, I recognize you. <laughs> What's this? Oh. How wonderful, sire. Yes, there you are, an instant coffee plant. Yes. Now, I'm looking for the girl I danced with at the ball. No problem. What's she look like? I'm afraid I didn't see her face. Oh, well, never mind. Why was that? Because we only danced the conga. Oh, yeah. But she did leave behind a few clues. Dandini! Come, sir! <laughs> this is my minder, Dandini. He's very tough. He used to double as a chicken. Yes. Nothing. They've nicknamed me Rumpo. I beg your pardon? Rumpo. No, no, you made a dreadful mistake. You mean Rambo. No, I know what I like. <laughs> Dandini, show him the first clue. Very good, sir. The girl was running around in a pair of these. I see. Well, obviously, it couldn't have been Zola Butt. No. You see, sir, if I may say so, I think they're bobber boots. I see. And with those on, she didn't exactly glide over the floor. You see, sir, you get a lot less hover with a bobber. <laughs> Another thing, another thing. While we were dancing the conga, two objects fell out of her dress. Really? Yes. Her initials were on the back. KC. KC. What about King Kong? <laughs> or it could mean Crystal Carrington. Yes. I wasn't actually thinking of shoulder pads. And finally, while she was running down the stairs, she dropped these old retainers. What a pity. And so, whosoever all these things fit, I shall marry. Well, you'll need to be an expert in Lego to put them all back together again first. So what we're looking for is a round shoulder, flat-chested bird with varicose veins and big feet. <laughs> Did somebody call? Right here. I must have drunk more last night than I thought. Yes, sir. Yes. Isn't there anybody else about? Not as bad as that. No. <laughs> she finds the life out of me, me too. you know. <laughs> Wait a moment. There's the ugly sisters. They could try that shoe on. May I? Yes, May I? Do you mind, sire? No, the sir. I'll get one of them. Sure. Esmeralda, could I see your foot, please? I think. <laughs> Funny girl. The king has sent this round. Could you? Well, obviously, it's far too big for your foot. I'll try the other ugly sister. Dolores, foot, please. Foot, thank you, Dolores. <laughs> oh, what a shame. She says this nasty feruca on the end here, you know. Yes. Good. She must get some odor eaters, dear. <laughs> <laughs> Good. I'll be all right. I'll be all right. It's it's mouth too big. I'm so sorry. Oh, oh, oh. Let me have it. Let me. I want to try my oh, luck. Give it here. Oh, 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 oh. Keep your fingers crossed, Boise. Oh. If I get her, I'll keep everything crossed. <laughs> this is it. Yahoo! Oh. Fits like a glove. What are you talking about? You great lump. You're supposed to put it on your feet with your hand. Yeah. Hang on. <laughs> oh, yes. Oh, yes. It's perfect. Oh, oh, I've come over ever so funny. Ah, uh, sire, is this the lady you've been looking for? Well, I'm not sure. As I said, we only danced the conga. Madam, would you mind turning around, bending over and touching your toes? Not lightly. I've been caught like that before. <laughs> look! Look, look! It's a helicopter. Yes, we're used to those things around here. You see, this house is right in the middle of Barrett's main flight path. <laughs> no, it isn't. It's a flying broomstick with some old crony aboard. My name is Nina Mishkoff. Bless you. Dandini, bring on the Benelin. Very good, sir. And I am a wicked, vindictive old witch. Yes, yeah, she is. Oh, you are that. Let me tell you, you're horrible. Always have been. Have you seen our new faces? Diabolical. The way you treat. You have no respect for people. You make me sick. I'll tell you this. I, I, I hate you. I hate you. I hate you. Three hates to 24. <laughs> yeah, and another thing. What? What, uh, what was that? What, 
What are you doing here, Nashkov? It's, it's your dog. What? It's just bitten me. Are you all right? Oh, I am. But Schnorbitz is in intensive care. Oh, the fool, I told Schnorbitz never to eat mutton dressed up as lamb. You watch your tongue, or I'll do to you what I once did to another man. I'll turn you into a little wrinkled frog. Madam, I don't believe you. Have you ever seen Charles Aznavour? I believe you. Yeah, yeah, I like him. He's good, you know. Dies in the old-fashioned way. Quiet! Don't you stay, my love. Silence! Silence! This is serious. Of course it is. You see the way it's going. I know. But tell me, Scott, <clears throat> why are you here? I can't bear to see a happy ending. But it wouldn't have been a happy ending if I'd married the prince. You see, it's buttons that I love. But me, I mean, why poor, plain me? I'm, I mean, I'm not handsome, I'm, I'm not even clever. No, in fact, you're a right, Wally. <laughs> you shut your mouth, I'll smash your face. <laughs> yes, but I can change that for you, Cinders. Can you change him into a lovable, warm, cuddly, loving friend? Yes. Take him behind that screen. <laughs> Could be a big night if I play my cards right. <laughs> and now for the magic recipe. Take the eye of a toad, the ear of a bat, the nose of a stoat, and the tail of a rat. You can tell she used to cook for school dinners, can't you? <laughs> and that makes sure that Cinders won't have a happy ending. <laughs> ah, but you're wrong. <laughs> it is a happy ending. You've changed him into exactly what I've always wanted. Come on, there's a look at it. Now then. Now then. Our fifth Father Christmas. And what is their clue, Father Christmas, this time? I uh, see you, Teddy. <laughs> Some like it hot, but on this coming Yule, we are sure that you'll be feeling real cool. Oh, well, that was, the, that was the rhyme. I'll read that again in a minute. And the clue he's got for you is a can of imitation snow. So try and think about that one. Our last Father Christmas in the audience. I don't know if you know who it is. Hang on. Hands are going up. Wait until I give you the clue. Now, this great Scottish footballer was once known to goalkeepers. Hands down. As Dennis the Menace. That gentleman on the front. Yeah, Dennis Law. He's got it. Let's have a quick pipe. The great Dennis Law. How are you, Dennis? Good to see you. Super to see you. X-ray vision is what you've got. Dennis, Thank thanks you. so much for coming along. A very happy Christmas. Lovely. The great Dennis Thank Law, you. ladies and gentlemen. Thank you. Cheers, Dennis. Good, mate. Lovely. Well, can, can you remember much about that? I'll read no. it for you again, because he had such a lovely Scottish accent. He left you the can of imitation snow. Some like it hot, but on this coming Yule, we are sure that you will be feeling real cool. Oh, she knows what it is. I tell you what, I can read one of the other two again as well, just to refresh your memory. We've got the final three here now. Dusty bin's out of the way. Do you want to hear the chip pan? Yes, the chip pan came in from Jan Leeming, who said, this container can be filled right up to the brink with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. So you've got to reject one. Which one's it going to be? Snow spray. The snow spray? Yeah. Oh, come on, Big what about it? Come on, go on let it go. Yeah? yeah. Got to go? All right, Dennis just brought you in then. The can of imitation snow, some like it hot, but on this coming Yule, we are sure that you'll be feeling real cool. Now then, some like it hot, but on this coming Yule might, might get you thinking of all kinds of things, but the clue object is a can of imitation snow. We are sure that you'll be feeling real cool. And you would have been, because with this, you can manufacture your own ice, and the fans will help to keep you cool. Just take a look at this. Well, this prize will give hours of entertainment to patients at the Leeds General Infirmary. Three 14-inch TV sets and a VHS video recorder. Then, for special treatment of patients, there's this specially designed Roho cushion, which offers comfort during a difficult period of treatment. And this industrial ice maker and these electric fans will help to keep them cool when their temperatures rise. Yes, indeed, John. Superb prize, that. And of course, that was the prize. That was the prize that Dolly and Matt Skilbeck wanted for their charity, but I'm afraid that's been rejected. So now we have the final two on the table. 
Final two, I can read them both again. Here we are. The first one came in, well, that's item number two from Sharon. Sharon Davis brought the glass tumbler in. Your chance to have a turnaround of Christmas sights and Christmas sounds. And the chip pan, which came in from Jan Leeming. This container can be filled right up to the brink, with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. So what one's going to go? Uh, what you're after is there somewhere. Shut it up, Dave. <laughs> okay, I give go. in. You're going to go along with it. Yes. Take it away. Take that. Take it away. I'm not going to blame him. Yeah. <laughs> All right. All right. You, is Again. it going to go? Once I open it, he's going to go. What did he say? Yes? No. Okay. All right, sir? Go. Huh? Go, he says. He can't wait. All right. Sharon brought you in the glass tumbler. Your chance to have a turnaround of Christmas sights and Christmas sounds. And I've not opened it, but you're not going to turn. You're not, are you? Not now. I'm going to. Right, it's gone. All right, your chance to have a turnaround could suggest you're thinking of a change of scene, but remember the clue object was a glass, or tumbler, of Christmas sights and Christmas sounds. The tumbler is a clue to the first part of the prize, a tumble dryer, and the sights and sounds, the second part, a colour television and video recorder. Very nice. Yes, indeed, something that should keep some people in Manchester entertained and informed for a long time to come. A 20-inch colour TV, complete with stand and video recorder. Also, uh, this outsized tumble dryer will speed the laundering of Hennessy House and leave more time for leisure activities. Then there's this special loop hearing system that enables the really deaf to hold group meetings and to hear the proceedings. Hennessy House needs all the bedding and linen it can get, these four duvet sets and a collection of assorted tiles should help the housekeeper and give some extra comfort for the guests. Yes, John. And that was the prize that Vera and Jack Duckworth wanted. So here we are. Your one's not gone. We can't be that lucky, can we? This is the prize that goes with you tonight. Jan Leeming brought you in the chip pan. This container can be filled right up to the brink with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. Okay. This container can be filled right up to the brink. Now a container might start you thinking about the bin, as indeed it did, but the clue object was a chip pan, and in case, that case, of course, chips are the main clue, with lots more, perhaps, than you might even think. Yes, something that does your thinking for you. It's a computer plus three recorders. You've got it, yeah! <laughs> And a really special computer, too, with 20 times the memory contained in ordinary computers. It has a hard disk drive, and its color monitor provides sharp shades and first-class graphics. Also, there are those two portable tape recorders, complete with two microphones, to bring a personal bedside service for those patients listening to Radio Royal in Liverpool. Well done! You've done it! Yes. Come on, wonderful. Let's go and get your prize. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. Come on. You got the prize you wanted. And it's going to Radio Royal Liverpool, Royal Liverpool Hospital in yeah. Liverpool. And folks, as it's Christmas, we decided that all of our great contestants should get what they wanted. But don't forget, you got money that you won at the end of the quiz. You've probably forgotten about. Linda Lee Lewis has that. Linda. <laughs> Just remind us, what did they win? £1,300. £1,300. <laughs> well done. And so, Matt and Dolly Skilbeck, they're going to get the, what they wanted for the leukaemia unit at Leeds General Infirmary. Matt and Dolly, there it is. And Vera and Jack Duckworth, they wanted what they're going to get anyway. St. Joseph's Mission to the Deaf, Hennessy House in Manchester. Vera and Jack, there it is. Lovely. Well, we're at a smashing time here in the studio. We do hope you've enjoyed it at home. I'd like to thank all of our guests, our mystery guests, most of all you for watching. Till we see you next time, happy Christmas. Good night, everybody. Have a good year. <laughs>